My mum doesn't respect my wishes when it comes to my surgery. So, as a background, I'm a 27 year old female and I'm engaged to a 26 year old female. So, an obvious adult that can make my own choices, right? Right. When I first found out that I had to get my gallbladder removed, I told my family the date just to let them know. When I told my mum while picking her up from work, she turns around and tells her work that she needs that day off. Confused, I ask her, why are you calling that day off? And she gave me a look and said, you think I won't be there for my daughter on the day of her surgery? And then I gave a confused look and replied with, no, it's just gallbladder surgery. It's not that deep. She tells me to shut up and that she's going. After a few days of talking to my sister, among others, about how I didn't really want people besides my fiancé there, I look up distance between just going to the hospital and picking up my mum before going to the hospital. If my love and I just go, it takes 16 minutes to get there. If I pick up my mum, she doesn't drive before going, we are driving away from the hospital to get her, and it will take 36 minutes to get there. So I get the courage to tell her that we can't pick her up, and she says that she doesn't like that, but it's okay. My sister also tries to explain that, I don't really want a lot of people there, and I just really want my love with me. When it gets closer to the date, the nurses tell me that they are strict about who gets to be with me. Absolutely no sick people or non-blood relations or extended family. Basically, they only want close family. I also explained this to my mum, who has been sick the past few weeks off and on, and she agreed it's for my health. Day of surgery. All goes great, my love is there with me, and is taking great care of me. My family sash friends are calling and checking in on me. So that it, that's it, right? <laughs> my sister texted me the day or so after surgery and told me that our mother called her, and here is the conversation that she sent me. So, mum called me yesterday when she got home. The very start of the conversation, she starts talking about calling up to the hospital to see where you were at. She was going to take the bus to the hospital. However, the nurse on the phone heard mum coughing and said that she wasn't allowed up there. And mum told her she was only coughing because of her allergies. The nurse told her it didn't matter, that she couldn't go up there, and if she did, she would be asked to leave. I mentioned to mum how you said you didn't want anyone up there but your love. And mum said she knows, but she's a mum and she wanted to be there, and it's hard for your baby to be going through something like surgery and not be up there with them. She also said that she would have waited down in the waiting room and not go up to where you were. I told her that I fully understand what it feels like to be a mum. I kind of have three kids, you know. But you said you didn't want anyone else up there but your love, and so she should respect your wishes, and even if she waited in the waiting room and not to go where you were, that would still be considered not respecting your wishes. Later in the conversation, she backtracked and said she probably wouldn't have even went up there, because she started thinking about it and stuff, and if she truly was going to go up there, then she would have just went without calling the hospital first. It was just really hard for her not being there, and she was really worried. She probably didn't want me telling you though, lol, so don't say anything to her. That's a quote from my sister that she sent me. I only took out my fiancé's name. Later on, my sister added that the other reason my mum wants to come up there against my wishes was because when I was talking about it, I was quote-unquote terrified, which is not true. I was a little nervous because it is surgery, but I was not freaking out. She just felt like her own feelings were more important, and that since she was my mother, she was entitled to go up there despite my wishes and the risk of my health, because she was my mum, and my sister was a fudging hero for pushing my side and trying to get my mum to understand that this isn't right. I think she would have went without telling my sister if the nurse didn't tell her she couldn't. So, thank you nurses, you saved my butt. This isn't common for my mum to do, and I'm glad that the nurses and my sister had my back, because she clearly wasn't thinking about my health or wishes at all, and it's only been three days since the surgery, so a lot has happened in a short time. Edit. I was trying not to make this a book, but okay. To answer people in the comments, I don't have kids, 
the I kind of have three kids was an inside quote of what my sister sent me. She has three kids. I thought some of were saying that I had kids in the comments because I wrote that my mum had three kids, but now I see a majority of people are taking it from this story. I copied and pasted what my sister sent me. That was her saying that she has three kids, so she knows how it feels to want to be there. I wanted to clear this up 100%. My parents divorced when I was three, my dad has raised me, and my mum was only in the picture because my dad made it easy to be. He paid her to watch us, he would let her live with us if she needed, he never asked her for money, and oftentimes she would, which he would give her money whenever she asked. My mother has done so many things to me that this isn't just being a good mum. She will do what she wants if she feels she is in the right, and she always feels like she is in the right. She has threatened my sister with taking her kids, yelled at me, and got angry for not doing crap that would suit her. Like, she gets annoyed and offended because me and my fiancé won't sell our house and get rid of our dogs to move in with her. We have to be a completely different person around her family. Oh, and when my brother kid was having surgery, she told him to let her father, which is not in our lives at all, and doesn't care about us, come home because he is going to bring money. It's a long but story to try to explain why mum is toxic. One, I did later on tell her myself before surgery that I would rather just my fiancé. Two, sorry you think my love is cringy. I don't. And three, if she had come out, it would have been so damn stressful for me because she is loud and fake in her I care for you and wouldn't have let my fiancé or the doctors care for me properly. And without telling you my whole life story, I can't show you why this isn't just a caring mum, so I'm sorry if you don't agree. And another point, I don't hate my mum. I just know how she is and that her intentions are not purely out of love. She likes to play these roles where she will act loving or caring for the people around us, or so she can brag that she's a good mother, and then when people believe her and us kids freak out on her, she is the victim, and we are the ungrateful kids. Or she will use it against us later. I was there out of the kindness of my heart, and you can't even come over to take out my trash and clean my kitchen. Again, even though she's 100% capable of doing it. That's a yikes from me, dog. I don't know what to say about that one. Our next story was posted by user Dab and Glock, titled Entitled Mother at Fair Leaves Son in the Heat, Child Protective Services Cold. Alright, this is a story from when I worked at a fair in my freshman year of college. Entitled Mother is EM, Poor Kid is PK, Me is Me, M is Manager, CPS is the Child Protective Services, and the Poor Dad is also in this story. Backstory doesn't matter, but I think someone will ask anyways. So I had to work here to get money for food and start getting money for my student loans. That's the backstory. Now, to start the story. It was a pretty hot day at the fair, and I was working under a tent at the bumper cars. I'm pretty sure the manager just didn't want to deal with an 18-year-old getting heat stroke because of him. Anyways, I see entitled mother and poor kid approaching the rides. Poor kid's face is as red as Rudolph's nose. All he had in his hand was a lollipop, and Entitled Mother was chugging a bottle of water. I also noticed that poor kid looks too light to go on the ride. At the fair I worked for, we have to weigh the people going on the bumper cars so they don't break their bones when they get hit by another car. So after about, like, 20 minutes, Entitled Mother and poor kid make it to the front. I put poor kid on the scale, and as guessed, he is too light. The following conversation ensues. A bit of rewording, I don't remember the exact conversation. Sorry ma'am, but your son is too light for this ride. May I suggest one of our other rides? No, he'll be fine, just let him on. Ma'am, I can't do that. Alright, I'll just leave him here then. It's not my job to babysit your kid, ma'am. Do not disrespect me. Alright then. I decide to let this go and just watch the poor kid for a little while. I let everyone else onto the ride, and just as I'm about to start, I hear a thump and a ton of gasps. I turn to look behind me, and poor kid is on the ground passed out. Which, thank god my podium was in the grass. I quickly call the manager on the walkie-talkies he gave us and pick up the kid. I say, does anyone have water? 
A lady hands me a bottle, and I pour it on the poor kid's face to cool him down. The manager comes with an ice pack to cool the poor kid down, and this whole time, Entitled Mother has been huffing and puffing and mumbling about how the ride hasn't started yet. I ignored all this until he finally says something out loud. And she goes, He leave him. He'll be fine. Man, we can't do that. He could die. No, he won't. He's my kid, and I know what's best. I was fuming at this point, and this lady was choosing a ride over her own child. I took out my phone and called the police to arrest this lady, get an ambulance for the kid, who seemed to be waking up. Entitled Mum tried to run when she saw what I was doing, but some stranger held her down so she couldn't go anywhere. Entitled Mother even tried to press charges against the guy who held her down. The cops arrived with the ambulance. Poor kid was placed in the ambulance, Entitled Mother was placed in the cop car, and Child Protective Services was called. Poor Dad was called as well, but Child Protective Services need to investigate the home. Entitled Mother ended up getting charged for numerous things, but the only one that I vividly remember manager telling me was child endangerment and attempted murder. She got what she deserved. A few months later, I saw the poor kid and poor dad in a store and walked up to them. Turns out, poor dad was in the process of divorcing Entitled Mother and currently had full custody of poor kid. Sweet, sweet justice. Edit, thank you kind stranger for the silver. Just to clarify, they tried to charge her with attempted murder, but couldn't get the case. They only really got her on the child negligence charge. Our next story was posted by user Captain Han Solo, titled, Reply or You're Getting Reported. So before I start, this is my friend's story, not my own. Also, names changed to protect identity. So my friend is an avid user of a Craigslist-like site here in Ireland, where people sell and buy goods that are no longer wanted. Sounds like I should get onto him, dude. He might be just down the street from me. He often used it to sell stuff that he brings home from work too. He works in an IT place that disassembles and refurbishes computers, and they let him bring home old spare parts that would otherwise be trashed. So, like normal, he put up an item for sale. I believe it was a micro SD card. He put it up on the website for sale at 11pm at night, then went to bed. He woke up at 6am and then went to work at 7am. At about 8.13am, he received a notification about someone being interested in what he is selling. Introducing our antagonist. She went by a moniker relating to motherhood with her birth year 94. We'll refer to her as Karen. At 8.13am, she sent a message to him asking if the item is still available. My friend is still in work, and as he's around heavy machinery, he doesn't notice it, and also couldn't reply if he did. At 8.21, he received a second message from our dear Karen, asking yet again if the SD card is still available. She again did not receive an answer. At 8.37, another message was sent by Karen, asking why he's ignoring her. He didn't answer again because of work. Finally, at 9.02, the last message was sent by Karen. Karen proceeded to complain about him not responding to her. She then called my friend a sexist, as he would have replied straight away to a man. My friend eventually seen the message at lunch and started to laugh at the whole situation. But dear readers, twas not the end of the story. Karen proceeded to report my friend for sexism, along with the message she sent him calling him sexist. He got an auto suspension from a computer, pending further investigation. After an appeal, and a day later, my friend had the suspension lifted. However, Karen's account was still active, so he activated his own inner Karen, as oftentimes he does upon poor innocent retail workers, and write an email to the website. It's been about three weeks since, and word has finally reached back, proclaiming that Karen was permanently banned from the site due to multiple instances of this behaviour. Justice has been served. Our next story was posted by user Small Citron, titled Entitled Mother Gives Me Crap Because I Won't Pick the Sesame Seeds of Entitled Kids Burger Bun. The title pretty much says it all, but I was waitressing at a burger restaurant during my time at college, and I got a table of family with two kids. The dad was chill, but the mother and kids were a nightmare. 
The kids were jumping around different tables, making a mess, throwing the cutlery around. So I pushed the kitchen to get their food out quickly, so maybe the kids would stop being so manic once they eat. The food comes and the burger buns have sesame seeds on them. Entitled Mother says, Oh, he can't eat this. There are sesame seeds on the bun. So I ask her if she's allergic and she says no. Entitled Kid just doesn't like them. And then she asks me to take the food back to the kitchen and pick the sesame seeds off the bun and bring it back. It was a busy dinner service, so obviously I politely tell her no. If Entitled Kid doesn't like it, then he can pick it off himself. But I don't have time to do that right now, as I have other tables to attend to. Entitled Mother then proceeds to berate and insult me and call the manager. The manager backed me up, and when it was time to pay, I hear Entitled Mother loudly saying how I don't deserve a tip for my rude service, and the chill dad just shot her down and tipped me anyway. Imagine living with that woman. The poor dad. Ah, oh, living with a Karen. Respect the drip, Karen. Please. Our next story was posted by user Britic1223, titled, Entitled Mother Drains My Bank Account. So I just got let go from my job, as I was a seasonal hire, and my last check was about $250. My entitled dad has decided that since I'm under his roof, it belongs to him, so he forced me to take it out at an ATM and hand him the cash. I was going to use that money to fix my car, but now I have no money, no job, and my car is not starting. And yes, $250 from that check was all my savings because he demands 50% of each check for rent. Red drugs. Or he will kick me out, which he can legally do since I'm 18. I have an interview on Tuesday at 7am, but the buses don't run that early, and I have no car, and there's no way I can make it there. Everything just seems so hopeless, because my dad cannot seem to fathom that this decisions affect other people. Edit. I'm dumb and can't edit the title, but it was supposed to be entitled Dad and not Mum. Edit 2. I can't go to the police because my mum is the sweetest person ever, and it would break her heart. He also helps care for her as she has cancer. Whew. Jesus. My god. Our next story was posted by user Karen Raug, titled, Mother Makes a Scene on the Bus Over 1.7 Euros. So this literally just happened 10 minutes ago. First post, English is not my native tongue, and I'm on mobile. I was sitting on the bus on the way back to the city, and the bus stopped at a checkpoint where they changed drivers. The driver is getting his jacket when a woman who just entered the bus with her daughter pipes up. Now, this discussion happened very quickly, and it is nothing major, but it is my first entitled parent story, and she made everyone very uncomfortable. EM is entitled mother, driver is the bus driver. And EM says, hey, you charged an adult ticket. And the driver looks at the mum and the kid confused. Well, I can't refund it since we don't have a system for that. My apologies. No, but she's a kid, you can see that, right? Do you want a CID or something? I have to note that although the embarrassed girl was quite skinny, she could have easily been 16 or 17. The kid's tickets are sold for 12 and younger, and she barely looked 12, so it's an understandable mistake. When the driver didn't reply, Entitled Mother continued to raise her voice to get the attention of every last person on the bus. Well, I'm going to have to get reimbursed for this. She's just a kid, are you blind? I already told you, mate, there's nothing I can do. You can't pay me? Assumed she meant in cash. I can't believe this. This is your mistake, and you need to fix it. Don't you get stabby with me and stop making those faces. The driver rolled his eyes one last time before reaching back over the register and pulled out some coins. One euro and seventy cents for the difference. Driver to the rest of the passengers, have a nice day, guys. When the driver left the bus and the mum returned to her seat, she kept complaining about the 1.7 euros for her daughter, who kept her head down and desperately searched for her headphones to keep her distracted for the rest of the bus drive. At least she was wearing a pair when I got off, clearly embarrassed by her mother's actions. And our last story is by Actual Redditor YouTube, the Actual Redditor YouTube channel. 
Jesus, good day there, mate. Titled, I know you, you're the owner of Amazon. Um, I'm not. You guys here have been asking for it, so for today's video, I thought why not tell you a little entitled parent story of my own. Yes, this is me, Redditor, writing. What I've got for you is an interesting tale that makes me question everything about my country's education system. Still to this day, I cannot work out how someone as stupid as the lady I'm about to tell you actually exists. A little background to provide some necessary context. In the UK, in order to pass your driving test, you must first complete a theory exam before you are allowed to go to a practical, the driving test proper. This story takes place at a theory test center in which our Karen was an employee. To set the scene, myself and a friend of mine, Jeff, my name Jeff, were both in the process of becoming licensed drivers about a year ago. As a result, we decided to book into the same slots at the same location to hopefully both pass our theory tests. Spoiler alert, we did pass, but as you will see, that is wholly irrelevant to this story. We enter the building, a horrible, run-down establishment in the outskirts of a small town, and we are immediately met by the following. Karen, barking like a Rottweiler. IDs! I barely had time to open the door. For those of you that don't know, you need to hold a provisional license in order to apply for a full driving license. This is what Karen was asking for, although both Jeff and I didn't really hear her. She was across from the other side of the room, with a voice so raspy it sounded like she had smoke stuck in her lungs. She repeated, <clears throat> I said I daze. This time, we heard her and hurried to pass them over, a little flummoxed by the current situation. Upon reflection, her manner was perhaps to be expected. The job that she has is an unfulfilling one, very low pay and exceptionally boring. She basically has to sign in candidates all day before they do their tests. She looked to be in her late thirties and was clearly run down and tired of life. It wouldn't surprise me if I found out she'd been working the test center for the past decade, but that does not excuse what happened next. I passed my ID over and she signed me in without saying a word. Then Jeff handed his over and she did the same, but before handing it over, she did a double take. Jeff leaned in to take his ID, but suddenly she stood up, a little starstruck. Oh my god, it's really you! What on earth are you doing here? Jeff, confused, doing my theory test? That is crazy! I'd have thought for sure you knew how to drive now, given who you are. I'm sorry, am I missing something? I do apologize if we met before, but I don't really know that I know you. Of course you don't know me, you're far too important for that. Okay, is this a joke? I'm just here to do my theory test. Please, could you tell me who you think I am? <laughs> oh, come on. Everyone knows who you are. You're the owner of Amazon. At this point, Jeff and I burst out laughing. This woman was actually serious. She actually thought my mate was Jeff Bezos. <laughs> are you joking? Look at his ID again. The lady looks at Jeff's ID again, but her expression remains unchanged. She still looks shell-shocked. What do you mean? This is incredible, the ref- the real Jeff Barnholt! Taking a theory test in London? What a coincidence! It was at this point I realized that this wasn't a mistake. This woman was actually stupid. Jeff says, Alright, come on lady, I think it's pretty clear that I'm not the owner of Amazon. I mean, first of all, his name is Jeff with a J, and mine is Jeff with a G. And secondly, we have entirely different surnames. Mine is Barnholt. The owner of Amazon is called Bezos. Not to mention I'm a 20-year-old kid from the UK trying to pass his driving test, whereas Mr. Bezos is about 50 years old from America. This is where the story gets weird and things take a turn for the worse. I get it. Everyone makes mistakes, and there are lots of cases of mistaken identity. But this Karen, instead of admitting her error, said this instead. Oh, stop lying. I know exactly who you are, as does everyone else in this room. There were literally two other people, another employee and another candidate. And says, actually, you know what? Since you're the owner of a huge company, do you happen to have any spare change? You must be like a billionaire or something. The least you could do is give me, I don't know, a grand? We were gobsmacked, and Jeff says, Look, I'm quite clearly not Jeff Bezos, but let me just prove it to you. 
Jeff begins to open his bag. I presume to get his phone out to look up a picture of Jess Bezos to show this idiot. But, of course, Karen finds a way to stop him. No electronic device is allowed in this building or you will be disqualified. I must say that given that she believed she was speaking to the owner of the biggest company in the world, she was exceptionally rude. Also, she was utterly incorrect with this statement. You were not allowed your phone during the actual exam for obvious reasons, but before and afterwards, you can do whatever you like with them. Jeff says, Alright, I know that that's just not true. All I'm doing is getting a picture of the real Jeff Bezos so I can pass my test and get out of here. So Jeff gets his phone out, except it was not his phone. It was his tablet. Big mistake. It was an Amazon Fire. And Jeff goes, Alright, so I'm just going to look up the real Jeff Bezos, and Karen sees his tablet and interrupts him. Oh my god, see, I knew it. You are the owner. No wonder you have a fire. Jeff knew at this point he was beaten. He started to protest, but then held his tongue. I think he knew by now that there was no winning. This lady was clearly insane, and there was nothing he could do to make her change her mind. I was still absolutely bemused by the whole situation. Bear in mind, this was the first thing in the morning, and I was half asleep. I nearly pinched myself to check I wasn't dreaming, but the pain in my eardrums from the following outburst quickly confirmed that this was, unfortunately, really happening. You're only lying to me because you don't want to give me any money. At this point, I literally went and sat down. I figured this was probably going to just be loud and last a while, and I was done with this lady's stupidity at this point. No, for God's sake, just listen. Then, all of a sudden, Karen starts to get upset. She starts crying. People like you don't understand. I work 70 hours a week in this hellhole to provide for my daughter. I'm a single mum and my girl is only seven. I barely make enough to buy her meals. Why are the rich always so selfish? Look, I didn't want to say this, but my daughter is severely disabled and we really need the money. I can't keep looking after her all by myself with the current financial situation. We need to take her to a hospice. The very least you could do is give me some cash to enable us to do so. What is it to you anyway? It would literally save her life. So Jeff says, I am genuinely so sorry to hear that, and I wish I could help. But please believe me that I am not who you think I am. So I go back over to the desk to help comfort the lady and support my friend. And I say, look, you have to believe him. If he had any money to help out, he would. But we are just 20-year-olds looking to pass our test. I am so sorry to hear about your daughter, and I wish you the best of luck with dealing with her disability. Actually, I am hoping to run the London Marathon next year, and I would love to raise some money to help for a charity. What disability does your daughter have, and which charity would be the optimal one to support? At this point, Karen storms out of the room crying. Her colleague, an elderly gentleman who had been so far anonymous, spoke up for the first time. Oh, I take no notice of her, lads. It's not worth it. I've dealt with this ever since I started working here a year or so ago. Yes, she does have a daughter, but other than that, everything she has told you is untrue. She isn't disabled. She isn't a single mother. She really doesn't need the money. Now, let me sign you both in so you can both sit your tests. Shocked, we handed our IDs to this kind man, sat our tests, and got the heck out of there. To be honest, I am quite surprised we both passed. I was certainly not focused during the exam, and I'm sure Jeff's mind was all over the place. But we left, and that was it. Never did we hear of this Karen again. So what started as a funny case of mistaken identity turned into something rather shocking and deeply troubling. How sad must this lady's life be to lie about her child in order to try and get some money off of someone? Soon after this car crash of an event, I realized why she stormed out when I asked her for the best charity to support for my marathon attempt. She had no idea at all and knew she was rumbled. What a disgusting human. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to give the marathon a go this summer as I dislocated my ankle in April playing football, which stopped me from being able to train sufficiently. However, this was a blessing in disguise in many ways as it now gives me the opportunity to ask you guys for any charities you may know that I can raise some money for. Please leave your comments below this post, or any in the comments in the video, of some lesser known charities that would be great and could help someone. Thanks!
So that's the end of that one. If you have any further questions, I'll be happy to answer them below. It's been nice to provide you a story of my own on this subreddit, and I hope you enjoyed it. Wow, that was stupid. Anyway guys, tell me what you thought of this story down in the comments below. I appreciate Reddit YouTube story, it was a pretty good one there. Um, if you have any other ideas of things you want to see, tell me, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Otherwise, have a great day guys, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.